In this video, we're going to talk about how to show that two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses of each other. So let's say that f of x is equal to x squared plus 5, and g of x is the square root of x minus 5. Are the two functions inverses of each other? Well, let's see if they are. So what we need to do is show that the composition of the two functions, f of g of x is equal to x, and also in the reverse order, g of f of x is also equal to x. If that's true, then the two functions are inverses of each other. So first, let's determine f of g of x. So g is on the inside of f. So we're going to take this stuff and insert it into f. So I'm going to replace x with the square root of x minus 5. So normally, this would be x squared plus 5. That's the outside function, f. The inside function, g, I'm going to put it inside of f. So I'm going to replace x with the square root of x minus 5. The square of the square root, these cancel, giving me what's inside, which is x minus 5. And then if you add that to plus 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, leaving behind x. So f of g of x is equal to x. Now what about g of f of x? So I'm going to take f and insert it into g. So let's start with g. It's the square root of x minus 5. So here's where x would be. And I'm going to take this and replace it or substitute it for x. So that's x squared plus 5. Now, 5 minus 5 is 0. So that leaves the square root of x squared. And the square root of x squared is x. So therefore, these two functions are inverses of each other. Another way you can confirm the answer is by finding the inverse function of f f of x and y are the same thing. So to find the inverse function, replace x with y. Next, solve for y. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 5. So x minus 5 is equal to the square root of y. I mean, y squared. Now you need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x minus 5 is equal to y. So therefore, we could say that the inverse function of f is the square root of x minus 5, which is the same as g of x. So f of x and g of x are indeed inverses of each other. Number 2. Let's say that f of x is equal to 3x plus 8, and that g of x is equal to 8x squared minus 3. Are these two functions inverses of each other? Well, first, let's determine f of g of x. So let's start with the outside function, f. So it's 3x plus 8. But then let's replace x, or substitute it with 8x squared minus 3. Now, let's distribute the 3. 3 times 8x squared is 24x squared. And then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. And we can't simplify this any further, so notice that this does not equal to x. So since, what just happened here? Since f of g of x does not equal x, then g is not the inverse of f, and f is not the inverse of g. So we could say g of x is not the inverse function of f. And we could also say that, let me make some space, we could say that f of x is not the inverse function of g of x, because this is not true. Now, let's move on to another example. So let's say that f of x is 7x plus 5 and that g of x 
is x minus 5 divided by 7. Are these two functions inverses of each other? Well, let's start with f of g of x. So f is going to be 7 times x plus 5. And then we're going to take g and substitute it for x. So this is going to be x minus 5 divided by 7. So we can see that 7 divided by 7 is 1, leaving behind x minus 5. And negative 5 plus 5 adds up to 0, so we're left with x. So f of g of x is equal to x, so that's a good start. Now let's see what g of f of x is equal to. So let's start with the outside function g. So we have x minus 5 divided by 7. Now let's take f and insert it or substitute it into x. So this is going to be 7x plus 5 and then minus 5 over 7. So 5 minus 5 is 0 and that leaves behind 7x over 7. 7 over 7 is 1 so we get x. So therefore we could say that f and g of x are inverses of each other. So this means that f of x is the inverse of g of x and g of x is the inverse function of f of x. So let's go ahead and find the inverse of f, just another way to verify. So let's say that y is equal to 7x plus 5. So we need to switch x and y. If we subtract both sides by 5, we can see that 7x, I mean x minus 5, equals 7y. And then if we divide both sides by 7, we have x minus 5 over 7 is y. So x minus 5 over 7 is the inverse function of f. And we can see that this is the same as g of x. So f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Here's another problem that you could try for the sake of practice. Let's say that f of x is 5 over x plus 3, and that g of x is 5 divided by x minus 3. So determine whether or not if these two functions are inverses of each other. So let's start with f of g of x. So f is on the outside. And let's replace x with g of x. So I'm going to put 5 over x minus 3. So what do we need to do here? We have like a complex fraction. What I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 3. So on the bottom, these will cancel. And so what I'm going to get is 5 times x minus 3 over 5. Now notice that we can cancel 5. So then this gives us x minus 3. And negative 3 plus 3 adds up to 0, so we get x. So that's a good start. So now let's focus on g of f of x. So g is 5 divided by x minus 3. And we need to put f into g, so f is 5 over x plus 3. So we can see that the 3's will cancel. And so we're left with 5 divided by 5 over x. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. So these will cancel. And this gives me 5x over 5. So now I can cancel 5, leaving behind x. So f of g of x is equal to x, and g of f of x is equal to x. So f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Consider this example. Let's say that f of x is 8x plus 7, and that g of x is 7 over x minus 8. So what is f of g of x? And what's g of f of x? Are these two functions inverses of each other, f and g? 
Well, f is on the outside, so let's put g inside of f. So 8 times 7 over x, 8 times 7 is 56, and then 8 times 8 is 64. Now, negative 64 plus 7, that's going to be negative 57. And as you can see, this does not equal to x. So f and g are not inverses of each other. So here's the last example. Let's say that f is equal to x cubed plus 5, and that g of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 5. Are they inverses of each other? Well, let's start with f of g of x. So the outside function f is x cubed plus 5. Now let's insert g into f. So let's replace x with the cube root of x minus 5. The cube root raised to the third power, they will cancel, leaving behind x minus 5. And then if we add 5 to that, this will give us x. And then for g of f of x, g is on the outside. So let's start with that. And then that's x minus 5. And then insert f into g. So once again, the 5's cancel. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we're left with the cube root of x cubed. In this case, the 3's cancel. This is the same as x raised to the 3 over 3, which is x to the 1, or x. And so f and g are inverses of each other in this example.